Hey guys, what is up? Zero here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. But it's not Blue Skies normal, it's Halloween edition! <laughs> yes, it's November 1st, <laughs> shut the fuck up, alright? <laughs> We're recording Halloween still. <laughs> Pretend it's Halloween, you still, you still have candy, eat it. Watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> I intended to get this- <laughs> Are you so- Are you so black laughing? <laughs> We're not even- we're 40 seconds in and you're already laughing! It's November 1st. Shut up and eat your candy. <laughs> you should eat your candy, ungrateful brats! <laughs> anyway. Oh my god. I was originally going to upload this the same day as After Story, but shit came up and I couldn't double upload. But it's fine, because it'll just be uploaded here. So yeah, let's go and delve into Halloween Blue Skies. Mm -hmm. uh, the guess new game, I guess. Maybe, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I probably have to like load my game. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. That refreshing crispiness in the air. And the vibrant flurry of reds and oranges and yellows gently swirling down from the treetops. It's definitely autumn. And with autumn comes Halloween. Well, I'm not a horror as much as someone like Yuri. I've always enjoyed Halloween. Gives a good excuse to indulge in all the things horror, not to mention prank friends and enemies. Man, Sayori and I used to go all out on each other when it came to Halloween pranks. Speaking of, she's late, as usual. Sayori, there you are. Hurry up, we'll miss out on all the fun. Ah, I'm going as fast as I can. That's that, that's adorable. <laughs> oh, look at her costume. I think she's a cowboy. I think just roll like a vampire slayer. <laughs> It looks really cool. Mm-hmm. I really like it. The, the, they showed the, uh, the... The outfits aren't new to me, by the way. I've seen the, the teaser had their outfits, and all of them look amazing. So, you guys, I think, will enjoy mm -hmm. them. They all look really good. Like, I actually really do like the sprite <clears throat> art for this. Mm-hmm. I took a little nap after school, so I was putting on my costume. A little nap, huh? Something tells me that this nap was more than just a cat nap. Well, you still look pretty nice, at least. A cowgirl, huh? Okay, she is a cowgirl. Okay. Wait, she- cause she has rope! That's mean! <laughs> I just realized that that's mean! I- I noticed as soon as it happened, then I was like, nah, it's probably just- cause she's a cowboy. That's mean! <laughs> I'm liking the Halloween twist on it. Has a really cool vibe to it. He- You look great as well, Zero. What am I? I haven't seen you in a costume for ages. It's really bringing back memories. <laughs> so is it gonna be one of those they know what my costume is, but we don't know? <laughs> they probably describe it. So maybe. you probably just have to guess. Yeah, maybe. Ah, thanks. Yeah. Can you believe they actually put effort into this? I laughed at myself. There I was, thinking I'd outgrown Halloween. Yet here I am. Well, you have to. It's Halloween, after all. I just wonder what the others are gonna look like. Her question lingers in my head as we make our way to school. Along the way, I spot a couple of other people, also dressed up. I like the spooky music. <laughs> <laughs> One guy doesn't look too out of the ordinary. Brown fedora, red and green sweater. It's his glove that's the get that's the giveaway. It's a sp it sports a row of blades. Upon closer inspection, his face looks charred and burnt. Impressive makeup, to say the least. So he flinches as she passes him. Oh, wait. Oh, he's Freddy Krueger! Oh. Brown fedora, yeah, he's Freddy Krueger from, Fre from not Friday, Nightmare on Elm Street. So he flinches as mm. she passes him. Aw. Ah! I don't like the look of that guy. It'll give me nightmares. Ah, that's, that's a funny pun. Because he, kill <laughs> he killed people in their dreams. Ah. <laughs> that's funny. Whether that was an intentional pun or not is up for debate. <laughs> 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 Ooh, look at them, Zero. I can help but grin as I see what Sayori's pointing to. A group effort in which one person in a brown grain Dane dog onesie. <laughs> Next to him stands a nervous looking guy with shaggy brown hair while a confident looking blonde man leads the pack accompanied by two women. Oh, they're being the Scooby Doo. <laughs> it's a pretty big contrast from the costume we saw beforehand. 
<laughs> the walk to school from work feels more like a parade with a variety of characters ranging from horror to cute, western to eastern. Yeah, that was one thing I liked about going to school when it was like around Halloween, was like seeing everyone's costumes. That was actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like it did kind of range from cute to horror. Mm -hmm. Creepy looking pale girl, jet, pale, pale girl with jet black hair covering her face ambles, ambles past us without a word. So he clings to me. Why do people have to dress up so scarily? <laughs> well, it is <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just that some of these costumes and the makeup are so convincing. I squeeze her hand gently. Sayori, they're just people having fun. Look, I'll say hello to the next one. You'll see that they're just celebrating Halloween. There's nothing to be afraid of. She doesn't look very convinced, <laughs> but nods anyway. The next person walks by us doesn't look too scary. Kinda looks like a janitor with dark overalls and expressionless white mask. Oh, it's Michael Myers! No, don't say hi to him! <laughs> sure, the mask is been unsettling, but at least he... Okay, never mind, he's got a huge knife. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, um, nice costume. The mask man doesn't reply, although he does stop walking. Now he's just standing there wordlessly, looking at his bow. <laughs> Oh. Uh, I don't think this is doing Sayori any favors. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't with me either. <laughs> Be like, uh, you uh, let's walk now. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah this, I just imagine the guy's house walking <laughs> like, the fuck you say? <laughs> you uh, on your way to a party? No response. He tilts his head as his fingers fiddle with the hilt of the knife. Well, uh. Sayori tugs on my sleeve as the man carries on walking. Maybe he was a mime! <laughs> sure, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> the school grounds look completely different at night. With the lights out and the usual noises absent, the whole building has a totally different vibe. I can't help but shiver silently as we draw closer. It's crazy how the hustle and bustle of the place really brings it to life. With all that that gone, the sleeping school looks like the typical haunted buildings you see in horror movies. Windows, devoid of any light, are sinister and uninviting. The faint light of the moon basks the ground in an ethereal glow. Either way, we must be the only students who are breaking into school to celebrate Halloween. Hardly the most wild of places to break into, but the sight in front of me confirms it's perfect for the festivity. Zero? Uh, don't tell me you're scared, Sayori. Hey, you're too! I puff my chest down a comedic display of Fox bravado. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> she playfully rolls her eyes. If you say so. By the way, where are the others? Right behind you. I can't help but let a yelp of surprise the unexpected voice causing me to jump out of my skin. <coughs> Meanwhile, Sarah is in a fierce fit of giggles, shaking with laughter. It's not funny! <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Don't tell me you weren't scared either. I saw her coming. <laughs> Aww. I remember this Aww. one. She's a witch. She's so nice. She looks so cute. All right, so it was Monica who said yeah. it. I figured it was Monica. Monica <laughs> holds an expression torn between sympathy and amusement. Sorry, Zero, but it was too good an opportunity to pass up. He should have seen your reaction. <laughs> I pull a face. Very funny. <laughs> nice costume, by the way. She does a twirl. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't so sure what to go with in the end. And it felt weird putting on a costume. I can't even remember the last time I did anything for Halloween. Also, I want to clarify something that I did say before. They're doing the whole Monica isn't facing you thing, but they did it right this time because they changed her neck. <laughs> yeah. Because before it looked weird because her neck was still facing forward, but her head wasn't. Now that her neck is like Sayori's, where it's like till it's to the left, now it looks normal. Yeah. Like, so now she does look like the other characters. Because I know they try to make it that she's not facing you so that she's not aware. To show that she's not aware, which I think is a cool idea. Unless it's like, now it's like, <laughs> if they, like, I hope when Blue Skies does come out, they change the default sprite and actually, like, change her neck and, like, her position. <laughs> also, her costume looks like she made it. It does, actually. It looks cool. That, yeah, I was like, it looks cool. I'm guessing this is the first time you're broken into school, huh? You shouldn't be proud of that, Zero. Aw, oh, come on, Monica. Where's your rebellious teenage spirit? She would be the one to be all- Look at her little hand on her hip! <laughs> she would be the one to be like, oh, Are we sure you want to do this? Yeah, you guys shouldn't be breaking into school. <laughs> You're a witch, after all. Aren't they meant to get up to mischief? 
Yeah, come on! It'll be a lot of fun! No one will find out. In all the excitement of preparing for Halloween, I totally forgot that Monica was a perfect student. <laughs> the thoughts of breaking in, especially into school, must be completely foreign to her. Yeah, I just realized that. We're breaking into school! <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> for something. Still. I Sometimes so. you gotta have a little fun. So they have all days as well. Oh, we're just doing it for fun, I guess. A wry smile works though it's way under the urn of face. <laughs> just for today. Oh. Spooky. <laughs> as it turns out, breaking into a school is kinda easy. That, or we just got lucky. We managed to find a window that's unlocked. <laughs> the interior of the darkened school looks just as spooky as the exterior. My imagination is doing me no favors, and every sound we make seems exceedingly unwelcome, like we've stumbled into the den of a monster. Even with Sayori and Monica near me, I can't help but feel uneasy. I was offered the idea of breaking into school. But now they're actually inside, it's only just dawning on me how creepy darkened schools really are. I swear I heard a rumor that a couple of days ago a student committed suicide in this very school. Did she hang herself? I shiver as I simultaneously try to block out the memory and remember more of it. <laughs> No, that wasn't it. She just disappeared one day. No trace of her. Almost like her very being was just... DELETED. <gasps> um. <laughs> but who would do such a thing?! <laughs> I see... <laughs> Don't evil laugh like that! <laughs> <laughs> Why not?! Now I'm spooked! Good. Gorsh! <laughs> Why am I goofy? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to say, I tried to say, I was trying to go for Shaggy and say Zoinks, but then I said Gorge. <laughs> two very I was gonna be scoops. I was gonna be Scooby and be like Rinky's Raggy, <laughs> but I went with Goofy. <laughs> oh my god! Gone like that. I mentally shake myself. No, that didn't happen. These are just silly rumors that school kids like to spread to creep each other out. But a, part of me can't, but a part of me can't help but imagine. What if that actually did happen? Would her ghost still be roaming these very halls? Twisted with vengeance, prowling for victims? What if... Here we are! Monica's always snaps me out of my spectral sp spiel. We're outside the club room. I could spot Yuri and Natsuki inside, pouring over, a, pouring over a pumpkin carving. It's a shame we're doing it in this room. Huh? Why? Well, it's Halloween, right? And the classroom opposite to us is where that one student hung herself. Okay, looks like it's true! Oh. <laughs> I freeze as Monica winks at me, opening the door. Of course she would! Oh my god, Monica's yeah. Mean. Ooh! Ooh, look at the room! Yeah, that's nice. Hey, guys! You two look great! Aw, look at her! Oh, look at your yaw. He's a gothic vampire. Yuri blushes. Looks like she's going for some sort of gothic vampire outfit, which, given her taste in horror and poetry, is a really good fit. Ooh, thank you, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite enjoyable to express my love for horror in this way. Poems are, of course, gratifying to write, but this makes a nice change. Sayori wanders over, trying to figure out what Yuri me me is meant to be. Are you, um, a vampire? Yes, a gothic one, in the vein of An Annie Rice's vampires. Funny thing is, the voice that I give Yuri fits her outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not too dark, is it? <laughs> Relax, Yuri. It's Halloween. It's pretty much a day dedicated to horror. It's fitting. <laughs> I really like yours as well, Natsuki. Pretty spooky. Aww. Good old skeleton. Aww, she's so cute. Also, yeah, I know what you're doing here, Mod. Try to fucking act smart with me. I know exactly what you're doing here. <laughs> Sayori's a cowgirl because she hung herself in the noose. Yuri's a vampire because she likes because she's obsessed with cutting herself in blood. Natsuki's a skeleton because she doesn't eat a lot, so it's basically down to the bone. And Monica's a witch because she did all this to these people. <laughs> you didn't know no. that? No. Oh no. <laughs> Now I'm big sad. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm like 90% sure that's why these are all of their costumes. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, that should be your name for today. Well, Sayori, where the heck are you? Not spooky. <laughs> that's your new name. It's super fitting. Natsuki looks on Monica and Yuri in a desperate plea. <laughs> <laughs> 
They just, they look, both they just look, look away. They both like, mm, yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh. After getting no response, she sighs deeply and starts up again. Sayori. Yeah? That is literally the stupidest thing I've heard all day. Everyone but Sayori breaks out into laughter. <laughs> hey, that's super mean. Sorry, but it's the truth. But it's cute. Cute? I'm a skeleton. How in the world is that cute? It's Halloween. This day's supposed to be, like, the opposite of cute. Now it's gonna be your outfit is fucking adorable. <laughs> Look at yeah, your little pigtail. You're tails. skeleton. You're a skeleton, but you're not doing a good job of being a scary one. Yeah, you're not wearing the mask. You have it cute because you have it on the side, and it's even like a cute skeleton mask. <laughs> she did this on purpose, though, because she's like, I'm a skeleton, but knowing Natsuki, she wanted it to look cute. <laughs> she even has a skirt. <laughs> she has, like, little shorts. Skeletons don't wear oh. shorts. <laughs> well... I won't lie, that's a pretty fitting name, not spooky. She grins. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, come on! Yuri could have come up with a better nickname. Yuri? Uh, you're putting me on the spot here, Natsuki. <laughs> to her credit, at least she didn't call her not spooky. <laughs> Zero? <laughs> Sorry, I really can't deny Sayori her moment of glory. Of glory. Fine. <laughs> Only if I get to give her a dumb nickname, too. Wait, Sayori... What exactly are you? A cowgirl, right? Sayori tips her hat down and adopts a southern cowboy drawl. It's high <laughs> noon! <laughs> well, not a very good one. Oh, she was trying to be like a cowboy? So what would Sayori cowboy sound like? It's high <laughs> noon! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's silence for a moment. If you listen closely, you can almost hear the tumbleweed going by. <laughs> Fitting for a cowboy, at least. Uh, Sayori? It's midnight. <laughs> it's high moon, then! <laughs> God damn it, Sayori. Monica looks deeply upset about that. <laughs> Monica's upset. Yuri's like, oh. <laughs> and Natsuki's like, what did you just <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> You've been watching too many spaghetti westerns, Sayori. Spaghetti? <laughs> Now I'm just hungry. <laughs> Ooh, this is part of the reason why I like Halloween. It really brings everyone together, even if the premise of the festivities is a bit dark. <laughs> I figured you'd like Halloween the most, Yuri. It's pretty much a day dedicated to horror. Although, it's pretty great seeing a skeleton... The music. What about- I can't really hear it that much. It's like a your reality version of like- it's like a scary your reality. I was wondering why you just went silent. I, I, like, was like, I think it got to like- it was like- got, I think it got to like the ink flows down and it's like- dun, 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 dun. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, can you hear the music oh. a little better? Yeah, I can. Alright, like try to listen for it while I read. Although it's pretty great seeing a skeleton, a cowboy, a vampire, and a witch all in the same room. Not exactly every day you get to see that. I just remember all the silly things we'd get up to. All the pranks, the scary movies. Yeah, it's pretty silly, but that's what makes it fun. Plus, I can't wait to scare you all in my ghost story. It's gonna be the best. Aw, not spooky. Please don't make it too scary. We already passed a bunch of people in terrifying outfits on the way here. This horrible guy with a glove made of knives! Yes, he listened. Yeah, I was listening to- I, I wasn't paying attention to anything you were saying. I was trying to listen to the music. But yeah, but I do hear all- it's like a- it's like the regular theme, or like your reality, but like Halloween. Mm -hmm. that theme. That's pretty cool, I, I like that. It. That is cool. <laughs> Yuri smiles softly. No surprise, she recognizes the character. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you won't sleep well tonight, will you, Sayori? <laughs> Sorry, Sayori. Can't make any promises. We all share a collective laugh as Sayori pouts. Um, speaking of festivities, um, I brought something that I believed would contribute to the intoxicating nature of the mysticism of Halloween. It's rather de decay, de decay, descendant. I think it's descendant. Deca de decay, de decayed. I don't know. <laughs> well, since the special occasion. Um. Yuri slides a slender black wine bottle off her bag. <gasps> oh, here we go. Here we go. 
its glass takes on an alluring shine beneath the fluorescent lights. And I was able to find a nice, a nice shanty. Shanty. <laughs> shanté. I think it's shanté. I don't know. <laughs> eh? I don't know. Y Yuri? <laughs> um, is that apple cider, Yuri? <laughs> no, I think that's wine. I've done something wrong, haven't I? Oh. <laughs> I don't think alcoholic drinks are allowed on school grounds now, are they? Not to mention they're underaged anyway. Although that never really stopped anyone from drinking. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just thought that given that we're trespassing anyway... I don't know what I was thinking. Now the atmosphere is ruined too. It's fine, Yuri. At least you didn't bring it during a regular club meeting. Just be careful not to let anyone catch you with it. I'll have to admit, though, you're the last person I would have expected to bring something like that here. Something like that here. <laughs> Yuri must be under the influence of the witching hour or something. There's still an hour or so until the witching hour. <laughs> you know what I mean. Hey, it's okay. It'll just add to the story. The story? Yeah, you know, the story that we'll be telling people later about tonight. Hey, you better leave that not spooky stuff out of it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Sayori! Not spooky! <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. Cut it out, you two. To be honest, though, I am a bit curious about how the wine tastes. Oh, come on, oh. Monica. Aren't you supposed to be the responsible one here? <laughs> You're right. She casts a wistful gaze at the wine as she says that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sayori and Natsuki seem to be glancing at the bottle curiously as well, while Yuri hesitantly slows it back into her bag. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at her, she's just like slowly putting it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, let's move along to the main event, shall we? So I think that was also supposed to be a reference to when Monica in Act Three said that at one point Yuri brought out a wine bottle <laughs> during the club yeah. meeting. I was gonna say like this is the second time she's done this mm -hmm. now, but um, that, but then I'm like, but this is a different universe. Yeah. I don't know if she did it in this. I was waiting for like them to do the exact reaction. Like before, apparently it was like Natsuki was just laughing, but was like curious to try some. <laughs> yeah. And it was like Sayori was just yelling at Yuri, and Monica was just embarrassed. Yeah, she was just like. Mm. <laughs> but they, but they did it a little differently. But I still think it was cute. Mhm. Mm Who wants to share their poem first? Oh, there's Halloween poems. Oh. Oh. Spooky Halloween poems. We gotta go with Natsuki. Oh, that's cool. So it instantly goes. The dark. Sometimes I lie awake at night, sitting in a room devoid of light, and think about the monsters waiting in the dark. I can't even imagine what they look like. Maybe sharp claws and skin lined with spikes. Maybe a mouth that could swallow me whole. Maybe red eyes that could pierce my soul. They could eat me right now if they wanted, yet they wait. Waiting for me to close my eyes. Waiting for me to dream of the light. Waiting for the perfect, perfect moment to strike. Now I'm thinking about the monsters, and I'm still lying awake in the dark. Ooh. I like that. Mm. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not great. Actually, <laughs> I quite like it, Natsuki. It's pretty obvious that horror is something out of your comfort zone. But you did an exceptional job at combining your style of writing with horror. Yeah, I was just about to mention that. Yeah, she did a good job doing yeah. that. Yeah. It was still like a horror poem, but it was like Natsuki's version. Yeah. Fear is a very complex emotion, so it's a challenge putting it into simple words, but I'd say you did it quite well. I would have to agree with Monica. Yuri actually giving her points on her po- Wait, I don't remember Blue Skies. I think they were actually somewhat nice to each other. I don't actually remember. Oh. Uh, I think it's still impressive, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fear isn't something that is meant to be completely understood. The complexity behind what a person fears and why you're afraid is almost unfathomable. Your poem is about fear of the dark, or more specifically, a fear of the unknown, yes? Yeah. Just, I don't like not knowing what's there. I don't like not feeling safe. I'm with it, Nasi. I don't like the dark either. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't care if it's like, I know a monster can't reach out, but I still don't know what the fuck is in there. <laughs> I have a nightlight in my room. <laughs> well, that's something to just tell everybody. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. I mean, there's... I'm not afraid to say it. I mean, there's probably a lot of people like that, too. True, true. I don't sleep with a nightlight, but I can't sleep in pitch of darkness. I don't know, I can't do it. It's weird. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. It's not because I'm afraid, yeah. I just can't do it. It's like I can't sleep in pitch yeah. quiet, either. Mm -hmm. I have complete silence, I can't sleep in that. Also, I'm eating Skittles while recording. I forgot I was recording. <laughs> My 
poem was all about how your imagination plays tricks on you and when you're in the dark. You know there's no such thing as monsters, but like, you can never be completely sure. That's what scares me, that uncertainty. True, I'm with you, Natsuki. This is why she's best girl. <laughs> I can relate. Oh, Yuri can relate too. But as I was saying, it's certainly a feat uh, in scapulating something as complex as fear into four simple stanzas. Natsuki smiles proudly. What can I say? I'm good at what I do. <laughs> yeah, well done, not spooky. Sayori, if you say that one more time, I'll... Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> not spooky. <laughs> we'll go with Monica's. Re Reverie. I wake up. Cold. Black night. Silent and still. I fall to my knees. Splinters in my hand. Dust in the air. Cold. Where am I? I reach for the light I need. I need, is it there? The switch is pressed. I feel the warmth in my face and my hands and my arms and my... I wake up. It's dark all over. Cold. Silent and numb. I reach my hand out. I have no eyes to see, but I can feel it. I press the switch. The warmth fills me. The dark comes over. I die again. I wake up. Noise in my ears. Voices? Cold. I reach out and feel. Nothing. Where is it? Wasn't it real? Wasn't it here? Everyone reaches. Nobody can touch it. The dark comes again. We all die again. I wake up. Here again? Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's like Monica dying, I guess, like the game. Like, you know, how every time new game happens. Yeah, like when she gets deleted? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Monica bows a little bit after she finishes, and I'm all over what she's read. I don't really get it. He- <laughs> that sounded like something Yuri would have written. Oh, is that a bad thing? Of course not! What does reverie mean? I don't think I've heard it before. It's an English word that means something like having a pleasant dream. But it comes from a French word that means madness. Appropriate for Halloween, isn't it? Monica's smile is looking a bit more sinister than normal somehow. <laughs> How cultured. Yuri looks a little distressed at the implication of Nazi sarcasm and the idea that Monica's poem sounded like something she might have written. <laughs> do both meanings relate to the poem? You could say that. What do you mean? It reflects on how a blissful act can make the pain go away. For a little while. Oh. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> Sorry. My old friend. My old friend. There is a dark and hollow thing that follows close into me and clings. It sticks to me, turns and turn, when I spin around and indiscern. In the dark, in the deep, the faint shape and it, the faint shape that it keeps. It goes away when sunlight shines. The sun sheds sweet and warm and kind. But does it really? Is it gone? Or does it secretly keep on? Is it really hiding there? Staring from beneath the chair? Bearing from on top of the stairs? Nowhere but yet, nowhere but yet everywhere. In the corner, in the in the gap, I stare in if it, it looks back. Weighing, weighing, weighing down. Draining, draining, draining out. The fuck? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sayori, stop keeping monsters. <laughs> that was very interesting, Sayori. I always enjoy seeing a poem step out of their comfort zone. Seeing a poet step out of their comfort zone a little bit. Especially when it comes to writing horror. <laughs> what do you mean? You typically write, oh. don't write darker poems, correct? <laughs> Unless I'm misinterpreted. No, no, you're right, Yuri. This is a real change of pace, and it was fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad my suggestion has gone d down well, then. I figured it would be fitting for the occasion. <laughs> don't give her too much praise. She'll start thinking she's the next Stephen King. Hey! I'd be a great horror writer. Actually, no, wait, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm not a big on, like, you know, actually scary stuff. <laughs> Makes sense. How's this poem about, anyway? Oh, Well, it's about... Whatever you think it's about. You trying to sound like Yuri? <laughs> no, silly. I didn't write it with a specific thing in mind. It can be about whatever you fear most. Hiding away, always there, never leaving. Even when you think it's all sunshine and rainbows, it never truly goes away. She's talking about her depression. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is about her depression. <laughs> so it can be whatever you think it is. A terrible secret, a scary monster, a childhood fear of the dark. It could be made up. 
Or it could be real. It doesn't just scare you. Maybe whatever it is drains you as well. Bit by bit. And what makes it scary is knowing it's always there. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Holy crap. It's safe to say that no one that no one expected that from her. And that te the temporary silence in the room confirms that. <laughs> Natsuki frowns, evidently non plus non plussed plussed? Not plus what she just heard. Even the cool and calm collector Monica looks a little taken back. Yuri, on the other hand, smiles contently, <laughs> seemingly unfazed by the somber <laughs> explanation coming from Sayori's mouth. Wow. A sombre. Okay, it's not just me who didn't see that coming, right? <laughs> Laughter fills the club room. I mean it, Sayori. Your use of metaphors and use of darker thematic imagery was very refreshing to see. Just do me a favor and don't turn into another Yuri, okay? <laughs> Natsuki! <laughs> kidding, kidding. It was great, Sayori. Aw, you guys. And now we go with Yuri. Oh god. <laughs> that says eternal. Why? No. <laughs> Why? Because I can't even read it. Damn. It is a big damn. <laughs> it's a big damn. <laughs> echo, echo, echo. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, the room is silent. Oh, no, I went too far, didn't I? <laughs> no, no, it's just the kind of thing we're looking for. Would you like to tell us what you were thinking of when you wrote this? Oh, okay. Here he takes a deep breath. It's a bit hard to describe, but sometimes there are nights where my mind just seems to be full of noise. Nights where I can hear. She trails off absentmindedly. Did she get caught up in her own poem that much? Hey, Earth to Yuri! Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get sidetracked. It's okay, Yuri. Don't feel like you have to rush. Yeah, take your time. Alright. There's something big we probably missed from that poem. Yeah. Yeah, Zero. What the, don't yeah me. <laughs> Meanie. <laughs> well, as I was saying... I'm going to try and capture the feeling one might have on a bit of a dark night. Wait, aren't all nights dark? It's a metaphor, Sayori. <laughs> I think Yuri's trying to talk about when people are going through a difficult time. That's right, Zero. The dead of night can be very fickle. It can be a peaceful time as the world around us winds down. But sometimes being alone with our thoughts can be terrifying. This poem was an attempt to reclaim some of that darkness. Well, I think you did a great job with that, Yuri. Yeah, I really liked it. Y you did? I'm... But thank you. Aw. Alright guys, her poem's been pretty good so far. But just wait till you hear my poem. I have a poem? <gasps> Here it comes. <laughs> my poem. An evil grin stretches across my face and without my own poem. Ooh, if you're this confident, I'll be looking forward to your recitation. <laughs> Stop laughing at who. <laughs> I can't help it anymore. Every time I hear you say it, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put extra effort in this one, Zero? Well, not quite. What's that supposed to mean? It's not a poem that I wrote myself. Zero? But, <laughs> I promise you that's very appropriate for the occasion. This is a poem that has an urban legend attached to it. Supposedly, if you read it out loud, you'll be cursed that something tragic happens to you. Maybe even death. Wah! Zero, that's so scary! I know, right? It's great. This poem is called Tomino's Hell, written by a poet named Sejio Yasuo. I've heard, I've heard about that. I remember, like, watching a video about it. And I remember, like, when they read it out loud, I skipped it because I believe in that and I was too scared to actually hear it. Oh. <laughs> it just so happens this is the poem that I'll be reading to you all. At this very moment! Zero! Oh. <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> Wait, why don't make Sayori? <laughs> I gave her an accent! <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> Zero, no! <laughs> <laughs> but I said, Don't do it! Don't do it! No! <laughs> Don't do it! What if something bad really happens to you? <laughs> yeah, right. 
It's called an urban legend for a reason, you know. An emphasis on legend, as in something that's not real. Still! <laughs> I'd like to see the data on all the people who've read the poem so far. <laughs> Statistically speaking, it's likely that something tragic will eventually happen to you anyway. I find that there's always some element of truth behind these stories, though. Of course, this truth might not reflect the literal meaning of the stories and legends. However, there's likely a message behind the legend. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gullible enough to believe any of this stuff, though. Alright, guys, let's settle down. You can all voice your thoughts after I read it. <laughs> Am I actually reading this out loud? <laughs> um... um... <laughs> Considering that it's... I don't know if this is the real... I don't know if this is a real one or if this is a spin-off one. I think it's the real one. But... I... You probably shouldn't, just to be safe. <laughs> I'm- I'm serious. Okay, okay, I won't. <laughs> just for you. You guys can read it. You guys can read it to yourselves. I remember, like, watching something and they started reading it out loud. Nothing happened to them, but I skipped that part of the video because I was too scared to actually hear it. <laughs> I don't want to read it and scare the shit out of you, so I won't. Just for you. <laughs> You'd be like, Zero, oh no, something's bad. This is such a long poem. Someone, someone, I heard uh, about something. I don't know if this is like a spinoff or like a reference to that, but I know that there is something like this. And I remember hearing about it and they said, after they were done reading it out loud, they had a heart attack. Oh God. It, was, it was really messed up. I'm not sure if it's just me overthinking it, but I feel a strange chill running down my spine after reading that. Zero. That wasn't seri- that was seriously too scary! <laughs> it was alright. I should probably downplay it, at least for Sayori's sake. <laughs> I'd have to agree with Sayori. It had a very creepy, old-fashioned feel to it. After hearing that, I wouldn't doubt that something bad looms in your future. Monica! <laughs> Personally, I found that poem quite beautiful. Of course, it's certainly eerie. But there are a lot of symbols and metaphors that I could pick out just from hearing that one reading. I think I'll have to look into this poem more in my free time. <laughs> you guys think that was scary? It was pretty meh, in my opinion. That poet was clearly trying too hard to be edgy and smart. If I may respectively disagree, the tone and word choice of the poem matches its content. It's not written that way simply to be edgy. And after all, if I understood it correctly, Tamino was banished to hell for murdering his own parents. Eh? How'd you get that out of the poem? Um, well... It mentions that Tomino is on the way to Avisi, the lowest of hells in Buddhism. Then killing one's parents is one way that you get sent there. Oh, well, whatever. Aw, she's saying that because she wants to kill her dad. Because <laughs> her dad's an asshole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't like it. Well, you guys can agree to disagree. But whether you like the poem or not, you'd have to agree that it is the legend attached to it that's pretty interesting, right? I mean, I guess. Zero, I'm gonna have to keep a good eye on you from now on. Just in case the legend comes true! Sayori, there's probably a bigger chance of something bad will happen to you first, given how clumsy you are. <laughs> hey! We all share a laugh, with Sayori joining in after a moment of pouting. Aww. Nah, uh, guys, this has been enjoyable. It's fun to scare your friends with silly pranks, and dressing up is a lot of fun. Although, I don't really like horror that much. It's just so scary to think that it could be out there. What? <laughs> Stop being a chicken, Sayori. <laughs> hey, you're the one who got scared by Monica earlier. <laughs> the girls all laugh at my expense as I let her <laughs> groan. She's never gonna let me live this one down. <laughs> Touche. Anyway, it's ghost story time, right? Ooh, ghost stories. I don't really know many ghost stories, to be honest. Eh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, I looked on the internet to find some. Most were super long. Like this one about a... What was it? Some kind of sleep experiment? <laughs> Sayori, oh. you're rambling. Oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> sorry, I'm new to telling scary stories. I'm curious though, guys. What sights or sounds scare you? I'll be honest with you. Silence scares me. Especially after I've read a gripping horror story. Thank you, Yuri. I, once, I agree with Yuri. <laughs> Silence is, like, fucking terrifying. 
Yeah, like especially if you're going to sleep and like there's just no noise. Yeah, not I... even like a fan. You have to hear like a fan. Yeah, I need a fan something. going. Vroom, 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 vroom. Yeah. There's nothing. I cannot sleep. That is no silence. Yeah. Complete yeah. other dead silence is scary. Mhm. Mm because yeah. it's like because it, it's so just unnatural. It should never be dead silent. Yeah. I remember one time I was going to sleep and it was dead silent and then like a big noise happened outside. I think it was like thunder and it was really. That's the shitty part when it's quiet because you can like hear outside and you're like animals and shit moving around. So you start getting spooked. You're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> one night it was like raining and I and there was a table outside and the rain was hitting the table, but it was so loud that I heard it from in my room and it was scaring me. <laughs> Someone's coming inside. It's Mr. Table. Like it was like, it was like rain dripping from the ceiling. It was like one drop at a time, like boop, 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 and I kept hearing it out there, and it was scaring me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is it just me who finds reversed music really creepy? No, I'm with you with that one too, Monica. That one's creepy too. Reverse music? That's creepy as hell. <laughs> oh yeah, every every single like reverse music, all of that's mm -hmm. creepy. My piano teacher showed me a few reverse pieces once. It just felt wrong to listen to. Especially when there's vocals. Oh, especially when Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Ugh. You start hearing things that aren't there. Hmm. I don't know. Come on, Natsuki. There has to be something out there that creeps you out. Uh, we'll just laugh. We won't. She's right, Natsuki. We've all shared. Well, what, what is it? Natsuki averts her eyes, talking to the floor. The noises that children's toys make. It's like when I'm home alone and I think of, like... A jack-in-the-box playing by itself. Well, shit, now I'm scared of that. <laughs> yeah, like... Jack-in-the-box is creepy as hell. Who actually gets those for their kids? I don't know. Fuck jack in the <laughs> I boxes. never had one. <laughs> It'd creep you guys out, too. Nah, I'm with you. I always found anything to do with children scary. Especially in the dark. Just saying, me? <laughs> <laughs> Sound of babies crying, for example. Normally it's annoying, but if I heard in the dark and there was no one else around, I shiver. <laughs> well, it's fitting you mention that, Zero. Don't you remember the argument we had on Halloween back when we were like 10? Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, where is this going? We were both on our way to a Halloween party. It was pretty quiet out, so you could hear everything. I heard the sound of a baby crying, but it wasn't coming from inside anyone's house or anything. There weren't many people in the streets either, and it definitely wasn't one of them. It was coming from down a dark alleyway. The chill runs down my spine as I remember exactly what incident she's talking about. <laughs> he, I remember I wanted to go out and investigate. I was scared. It was a toddler in danger. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't let me. You were too chicken to. Hey! <laughs> okay, okay, we were just in a rush. <laughs> but anyway, pretty creepy, right? I guess I can kind of see what you mean about babies crying being creepy. <laughs> I was a bit scared myself. Looking back, I'm glad you convinced me not to go. Guess being a wimp has its perks, huh? Yuri, Sayori, and Natsuki all laugh. Oh, pff, Monica, why aren't you laughing? Monica <laughs> looks like she's been slapped in the face. Guys, do you not realize how lucky you were? Eh? Oh, God, you guys have no idea. What? Sayori, did, something, did anything seem a bit off about that baby's cry? So he scrunches up her face and attempts to recall. Hmm, no, not really. Well, it did sound a bit repetitive, though. Like, the cries didn't change much. Monica's voice shakes as she replies. Wait. Was that like a uh, fake baby cry? To get someone's attention? Guys, oh. that's... What serial killers do to lure out young women? Yeah, oh I was just about to say god. that. Oh god. I was, about to say, oh I was like, she started repeating, goodness. so I'm like, oh my god. I didn't know that was a thing. Is that, is that a real thing? I think so. Oh my god, that's creepy. I can't help but burst out laughing. <laughs> what? Pretend to be babies? <laughs> Come on, Monica. You had me going for a second there. You kind of rushed the punchline. You kind of ruined the punchline. Look straight into my eyes. No, Zero. They record a clip of babies' cries and hide the speaker in a dark place. They prey on women's maternal instincts because they know they're attached to the sounds of infants in distress. The laughter dies on my lips as a cold, sickening silence takes its place. Oh my god. That's why the cries didn't sound natural. 
They just recorded a small segment and replayed it over and over. It all makes sense now. The unnatural cries in the dark alleyway. A meticulous, calculated effort to ensnare an unsuspecting victim. Wait, hang on! Didn't Miss Kasumi go missing around that time? Oh my god! <laughs> Miss Kasumi used to teach Sayori and I a long time ago. Um, what happened to her exactly? Sorry, shrugs. We were told that she moved away suddenly to work in a different part of the country, right? <laughs> People used to spread really scary horrible rumors about what happened to her, but they don't really make sense. Hang on. She... She had a child of her own that year, didn't she? Oh god, she did. <laughs> and my parents wouldn't really discuss her whenever I asked. They were super dismissive of the whole thing. I always wondered why. Oh my goodness. Wait, you guys actually believe that? Everybody looks at Natsuki shocked. Oh, come on! There's no way you guys almost walked into a trap. <laughs> Besides, it's just an urban legend. What happened to their teacher then? She just disappeared and Zero's parents refused to talk about it? I don't know about you, but that just seems pretty convenient for, their sto for this story. Well, maybe some things are better left off unanswered, huh? Although, I do hope Sayori and I are just misremembering. Well, on that cheerful note, <laughs> how about we move on to the next story? <laughs> I'd like to nominate Natsuki. My story? Uh, Natsuki, do you not have one? Hey, I never said that. I do, but it's just, I got it off the internet. I don't like horror. So if it's bad, it's not my fault, okay? Natsuki clears her throat. Anyway, it's about these two friends named Aoi and Naruko. Basically, there's a rumor going on in their high school about people see, seen going in and out of an abandoned house on the outskirts of town. Most people thought they were just drug dealers, but some swore by the fact that the house was being used by the cult of some sort. Aoi and Naruko was, were pretty outgoing and adventurous, so they decided one night to check the place out. They got to the house, and it's pitch black out. Luckily, Aoi brought flashlights for the two of them. Naruko, on the other hand, brought a knife with her, just in case they ran into any trouble. They go inside, and the place reeks. We're talking Zero's room levels of stink. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Everybody burst out laughing. <laughs> Is that really necessary? Why are you laughing? <laughs> You're all mean! <laughs> My room doesn't even stink! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Anyway... They look around for a bit, and they find the door to the basement, the stairs to the second floor, things like that. Finally, they go into the kitchen to find the source of the smell. There's some weed on the table, and it looks to be recently used. This confirms Aoi's suspicions that it's just a drug dealer and she wants to leave. Naruko, on the other hand, still wants to snoop around for a bit. They get into an argument with each other, and with Naruko calling Aoi a coward because she thinks Aoi wants to leave and she's afraid of all the rumors. Then Naruko goes, Yeah, well if you're not afraid, then go down into the basement. Aoi gladly accepts and walks over to the basement door. As soon as she opens it, she feels a sharp pain in her back, and before she can react, she gets pushed down the stairs. She tumbles down the stairs, and once she hits the bottom, she realizes she can't feel her legs. Oh wow, this is a shitty friend. <laughs> oh my god. Her vision is blurred, but she can barely make out a figure standing on top of the stairs with a knife. The last thing Aoi hears before she's passing out is Naruko's footsteps. She descends on the stairwell, and an old grizzled voice says, This will do nicely. <gasps> Naruko fucking betrayed us! Oh my god. The very next day, Naruko and Aoi call in sick. It's kind of a shame, really. Because they miss out on all the talk about how someone heard strange animal-like growling coming from the old abandoned house on the outskirts of town. So, yeah. I hope you liked it or whatever. What happened to Naruko and Aoi at the end? <laughs> they didn't die, <laughs> did they? <laughs> Use your imagination. Nice story, Natsuki. Cults usually provide good fodder for horror stories. Indeed, I've read quite a few novels involving cults. Doesn't Portrait of Markov involve something like that? Um, something similar, yes. Speaking of Yuri and horror stories... How about you go next, Yuri? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Mami? Alright then. Playing this mod before going to sleep <laughs> is a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Give it your best shot. You're walking alone, one pale autumnal night. The moon is graceful. Casting her light down below like the snowdrops. As you continue down your path, something shambles behind you. You turn around to look at what it might be, but all you see is a cluster of leaves rustled by the pale air. 
Slowly returning, you notice the lights in every house around you going out, then flickering before fully extinguishing. With, ten with tentative steps, you advance towards one of them to investigate. Just as you're about to reach the window, you hear something snapping behind you. A broken twig is all that remains. It's Sans! <laughs> 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 Uncertainty floating around inside your head, you will consciously start walking faster, away from the suburbs. Eventually, you find solace in silence, the only sound being your heartbeat. It's quiet. Nothing bad seems to be happening now. In fact, nothing at all seems to be happening. Confused, you look around and see you're in front of your house in the street. No one is stirring, nor are there any lights. Gently pacing towards your house, you go through the door. The lights are on, the television is on, but no one in sight. This is unusual. You're expecting your parents to be home tonight. Have they gone out without telling you? No, that couldn't be it. They always let you know where they'll be. You pull out your phone and open up your contacts to give them a call. However, no one is registered in there anymore. No matter how hard you try to remember, you can't call out to them. Suddenly, there's a heavy knock on the door. You peer through the keyhole but see no one. Another knock. Another. Another. Her <laughs> eyes got all big and scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> you cautiously open the door. There's still no one there. No one anywhere. How did this happen? Why are you alone in the piercing silence? Silence so loud it fills the air. You do not know, and there isn't any way for you to find out. That's it. What a dumb story. Nothing even happened. Where were the scary monsters and stuff? There is no greater fear than the unknown, Natsuki. Sharp claws can be prepared for, and dramatic silence cannot. <laughs> to be fair, Yuri's story is kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. I'll give her credit for that. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> What's more fearful? Something you know is coming for you? Or feeling safe when you're in fact not? Fucking the second one, because that's literally what DDLC is. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's li fucking feeling safe when you're not. That's the creepiest, because at least I know that something's gonna attack me and I know what it looks like. Not knowing what it looks like and thinking that I'm safe, that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Quite a somber note to end your story on, Yuri. We can always count on you for a good horror tale, huh? Anyway, I'll go next. Although, a scary story. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've come up with a ghost story before. <laughs> I haven't read too many horror stories either. Well, I guess that isn't a surprise. <laughs> Just make one up then. It'll be fun. Well, I can say I've tried that before. Can't say I've tried that before. Are you trying to get out of telling a story? Of course not. Now that I think about it, there is one I've heard of. Malaga's expression turns serious. The mood in the room turns, seri turns serious. She uses the same intensity she did for when she read her poem and everyone quiets down. A number of years ago, Tanabata had come along as it does every week, every year. It's the story of a lost little girl. Where am I? She cried. She cried and cried, hoping desperately she could find someone to help her. But the little girl was alone. Nobody could hear her. But just as all hope seemed lost, she heard a voice. Isn't the night wonderful? The girl looked up. Where before there was nobody was now a man in an elegant yukata. He wore what looked like a no-mask, but it was completely blank. Behind the man stood a stall, stood a, stood a stall, mask and lanterns of all sorts hanging from it. How rude of me, the man adonished himself. Welcome, dear customer. Your heart seems unhappy. <laughs> Why not take a look at my wares, the man said as he gestured to the mask behind him. Please take one, please take one, one that'll bring a smile to your face. The girl looked at the masks. There were ones that looked frightening, ones that looked strange, and ones that looked exotic, and many others. What about your mask, mister? The girl asked. I'm sorry, but this mask is very special. It's not for sale. The girl looked sad. I like that mask. It looks really cool. The man laughed softly. It has been called many things, but this is perhaps the first time it has been called cool. Would you like a fruit? The man asked, picking one from the tree behind him. They're sweet and delicious. The girl reached to take it, but the man pulled his hand back. Ah, they're not for children. The girl was confused. But just tonight, it should be fine. But just tonight, it should be fine. He said as he offered his hand once again. In the festival of the night, children can become adults and adults can become children. Is that true? asked the girl. The man unsure who it was. The girl took the fruit and bit into it. It was unlike anything she had tasted before. It was almost overwhelming, but the, it, the flavor was wonderful. It's good, the girl said happily. And the man laughed again. I'm glad you think so. There's plenty, so please eat all you like. 
As she ate, the man took down a mask. What about this one? The girl took the mask. It looks like me, but looks like a princess, the girl said in awe. Do you like it? Please take it. But what about money? asked the girl. I don't need money. Instead, I would like to be friends. Is that okay? Of course, the girl agreed. From now on, we're friends. I'm glad, the man said with gratitude. Why not put on your mask? The girl did so. She was overcome with a strange feeling. Why is it? she asked. Ah, at last. Long have I dreamt of this moment. My dear, my Eve, my only friend. The man smiled beneath his mask. He spoke as the light of the stars began to fade. For it is the festival of the night, where the children become adults and the adults become children. Let it be known. Another unconventional horror story, I see. Okay, I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say they switch places. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The, old, the little girl turned into the old man, and the old man turned into the, li the little girl. Either that, or oh. she just turned into an old woman, and he turned into a young boy. Oh. <laughs> yep, I guess monsterless horror stories are more popular than you think. I rather like the mysterious tone myself. It's very reminiscent of the style of Asian horror stories. You guys have a weird sense of what's scary. <laughs> I mean, the stories aren't necessarily meant to scare you to death. Spirits are only, aren't only frightening, you know. Well, it is Halloween. Aren't things supposed to be scary today? But Halloween is fun too, not just scary. Alright you guys, break it up. Let's just all agree to disagree again. Monica smiles gratefully at me. Well, Natsuki shoots me a disgruntled look. Anyway, this is my turn to tell a story. So this is something that actually happened to a friend of mine. Oh, really? Yes, really. <laughs> so it happened to Sayori then? Huh? <laughs> the story's about me? Is that true, Zero? <laughs> what? No, it's not. Let's just get on with the story, shall we? She, she said that because she's trying to say that I don't have any other friends. <laughs> Yeah, I was taking shots. Uh, mean? <laughs> right. Anyway. So this friend of mine lived alone in an apartment building. He lived in the downstairs area and loved to party all night. And one night, he was out as usual. However, when he stumbled back home in the early hours of the morning, he realized he'd lost his keys and was locked out of his apartment. So he ended up having to call his landlord, who was pissed at having to wake up in the middle of the night to let him back in. But in the end, he was able to get home safely. So that's all that matters, right? I can certainly relate to that comforting feeling. Right, but when he got inside, he noticed that his keys were actually on his nightstand. So he didn't lose them after all. And there weren't an extra set on the landlord the extra set that his landlord lent him? Nope. He was able to recognize them by the keychain he attached to it. So that's it? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> What's so scary about that? I guess you haven't realized it yet, huh? What do you mean? The apartment was locked when he got back, right? Yeah, I got that part. But his keys were still in the apartment. So how do you suppose he locked them in? Uh, huh? Someone must have gotten into his apartment and placed them inside, then locked the door themselves from the inside. And the only set of keys are my friends and his landlord, so... Whoever it was who brought his keys back was still in the apartment when he got home. <laughs> now she's so tired, she's terrified. <laughs> <laughs> But who was it then? I'm <laughs> saying so we're scared too. I didn't see her. <laughs> I didn't even notice her. <laughs> She's like scared too. <laughs> he never found out. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna make me permanently paranoid. <laughs> that was quite an enjoyable story, Zero. And although it was short, the realization at the end definitely made up for that. Plus, the story calls on the real fears of things like squatters, stalkers, and killers. Who knows? I mean, one of us is a squatter living in our own home, hidden away, never to be found. Stop right there! I don't even want to think about it! <laughs> okay, okay, that story wasn't half bad. <laughs> Glad y'all liked it. I'll have to admit, this has been pretty fun, guys. Yeah, it really has! We should do this sort of stuff more often. Sayori, Halloween only comes around once a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if I may make a suggestion. We all turn to look at her. Uh, well, as it's fitting for the mood, would you like to try the Kagiri-san game? Huh? What's that? Oh, that Ouija board thing? <laughs> Isn't that just some urban legend? Only if you believe it is, Natsuki. Oh, 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 oh is that say Ouija board? Or is it, cause I thought it was Ouija board. <laughs> it's the Ouija board, yeah. Why is it called Ouija board? It's the, 
is that's how you spell it. It's really? Ouija board. Oh. Yeah. Ouija board. We I thought it was spelled like Ouija. <laughs> no. Ouija board stuff, huh? On one hand, although it's not very hard to scare me, I'm a bit skeptical about ghosts. Although I've heard from a lot of people that messing around with the dark arts is a dangerous business. I mean, we're in a dark school, late at night, with no one else around. If we really did open a portal for, for a malevolent spirit to enter our world, who knows what could happen? Nah, that's a bit too far-fetched. At least if the spooky ghost kills me, I won't have to do that math homework that I've been procrastinating for a week. True? <laughs> oh my god. Seems a lot more tempting now. <laughs> hmm. Can you tell us more, Yuri? Of course. So, Kokiri-san is the name of the spirit we'll summon. The name comprises three animals. A fox, a cock, a fox, cock, a dog, coo, and a raccoon, ri. Oh. Oh. Yuri. And her thing is about a raccoon. Huh. Her poem's oh. about a raccoon. I didn't think about that, actually. Is that what they were going for? Mm. It might have just been a play on words. It might have already given her the name Yuri, and then that's actually really cool. Maybe it's like Rye. It all should be Rye, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Hope it's Rhi, that'd be cool. Each animal represents something different. For example, the dog is loyal and protecting, while the fox is a trickster or a teacher. Also, I noticed you laughed and I said cock. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask Kokiri-san different things. You can ask who loves you, whether you'll become rich, etc. Hang on. You can ask it anything? A devilish smile crosses her face. Why don't we ask Kokiri-san when we're going to die? Here he looks aghast, nervously fiddling with a strand of hair. Natsuki, there are questions you shouldn't ask. That's one of them. Nah, come on, Yuri. This is the perfect time for it. I don't think oh. you realize what you're getting into. There are many stories of people messing around with spirits, all ending with awful consequences. Aw, come on, Yuri. Besides, it's part dog. If it starts typing to possess someone, we can just throw a stick for it. Ugh. <laughs> Also, it's a Shinto spirit, not a demon or ghost. Not Spooky's the one wearing a bone outfit, and we all know dogs love bones! So it's just her who has to worry, hee <laughs> Nasuki would've <laughs> made a wonderful Medusa with a death glow like that. <laughs> well, seeing we've already broken in and have some illegal contraband on our hands... Oh yeah, because the wine... <laughs> she shoots a wink at Yuri who ducks her head down blushing! <laughs> <laughs> Adding an animalistic wrath into the mix? Well, might as well! <laughs> Yay! That's the spirit! Okay then. Let's begin the preparations. With the ritual set up and the candles dimmed, we're ready to go. We also had to open a window, which, according to Yuri, allows the spirit to enter and exit. The ambient noises from outside permeate the room, adding to the atmosphere within. So, what happens now? Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh. Place a coin on the red gate. The Toro, the Tori is where the spirit enters and exits. Ooh! <laughs> now, oh, wow. place you, please place your index finger on the coin. After a bit of crowding, we managed to squeeze the tip of everyone's finger onto the coin. Be careful not to let go of the coin. What happens if we do? Uh, please don't. <laughs> fine, fine, let's get it over with already. Uh, Alright. Yuri visibly composed herself and continues. Kokiri-san, Kokiri-san, if you're here, please move this coin. At first, nothing happens. Just as Natsuki thought, a silly urban legend. No way. <laughs> there is no way the coin just moved. My eyes would be playing tricks on me. The coin, initially on the red tori, slowly slides across the S. Oh! <laughs> did you guys see that? Even Natsuki's in a state of disbelief. Alright, who did that? Real jokester you are, very funny. Crickets outside can be heard, clearly in the silence that follows. No one steps up to claim responsibility for the coin's movement. Wow, so that's how it's gonna be, huh? <laughs> Whoever it was, just tell us already! More crickets. Fine, I'm not bringing cupcakes anymore until someone admits to it. <laughs> but not spooky! <laughs> and stop calling me that! <laughs> I bet it was Yuri, she was the one who suggested this. Uh, uh, me? I would never... Hmm, I guess Yuri is a scaredy cat. It wasn't me either. Yeah, Siri's a scaredy cat too. So I'd leave Zero and Monica. Natsuki, if you consider that maybe, just maybe, it really is Kokiri-san moving the coin? Yeah, right. There's no such thing as ghosts. Kokiri-san is a spirit, not a ghost. Same difference. Well, all I have to say is that I didn't do it. 
Now I see skeptical glare causing me to hurry on. But I know that there's got to be some sort of scientific explanation for this. I can't seriously be, be I can't seriously witnessing the paranormal, can I? Okay, Einstein, what's your scientific explanation for this then? Er, uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it has to be the one of us doing it. I know. Why don't we ask Okiris on something that Zero and I couldn't have known? Given that you seem to suspect us most. <laughs> okay then, so you already ask it something. But what should I ask? I don't know. Anything Zero and Monica couldn't have known. Um. Oh, I know. Kokiri-san, Kokiri-san. Can you please tell me what I have on the top shelf of my refrigerator? <laughs> what kind of question is that supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I guess I'm kind of hungry. The banter pe pe peters out as we expectantly watch the coin. Suddenly the coin jerks a little to the right. Now she squints as she scrutinizes each of our faces. Meanwhile, the rest of the girl's eyes seem to be glued to the coin, Yuri's face blanching at the each move further's movement. Everyone seems to wait with bated breath as the coin slowly inches over. To the letter R. A. Siri's eyes widen while Yuri ever so slightly backs away from the paper. The coin carries on moving. Right to me, ramen. R A M E. <laughs> ramen? E. <laughs> They're leftovers. Sayori, you've really got to eat more healthily. <laughs> but it's so <laughs> tasty. I'm with Sayori on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we really be using Kokiri san to answer such frivolous questions? That wasn't frivolous at all. We're proving whether or not it was one of us moving the thing. And now you have your answer. None of us moved it. Wait, so is that supposed to mean... It was Kokiri-san who moved it. Monica seems awfully cheery at this revelation. <laughs> Man, Monica, <laughs> does anything phase you? <laughs> I've just been much a scarier scenario. I've just, I've, I've just been in much scarier scenarios than this. Plus, I've got to stay confident as the president, you know? I see. Wow, so Kokiri-san is real then? Ooh, I tried to get you all to take this seriously. I mean, you really can't blame us for thinking all this was fake. I do still think there's a trick to this. Natsuki... Whatever. If you want us to take this seriously, then I'll take this to serious places, alright? Natsuki... Kokiri-san, Kokiri-san, what is the date of my death? Oh. Here he throws me, a frightened, throws me a frightened look as we all wait for the coin to move again. Her fingers feel cold as ice against mine. Slowly, the coin moves to, from the letters from the letter N and inches over to the numbers. 31st, 10, 2018. That's today. I don't like this anymore, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Some questions are better off not being asked. That can't be true, right? Kokiri-san, Kokiri-san, what about the other girls in the room? The coin doesn't move. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh my god. Don't you want to know the date of your own death? Yeah. No! Yeah, like some piece of paper and a coin is going to tell me that. Yeah, also, yeah, I wouldn't even want to know it. What the fuck? Yeah. You looked pretty scared earlier. Shut up. As I move away, Yuri gasps. Zero, we haven't probably finished the game yet. There's a certain procedure. Ugh, there's no point. He's already broken the finger on the coin rule. What do we do? Sorry, Yuri. I'll come back to help you guys finish in a bit. You better hurry up, Zero. Whew. Finally out of the club room. Can't believe that that game actually scared me. Oh, well, I'm curious to know who it was who it was who rigged the game. It had to have been rigged, right? The bathroom is pitch black when I open the door, save for the faint moonlight glinting off the bathroom mirror. The contrast between the darkness and the shining glaze da gla glass dazzles me for a moment until I notice it. Until I notice Monica! The dark <laughs> figure within the glass that's standing completely still. Oh, fuck. Oh. All the urban legends that I've heard involving mirrors begin rush through my head. Some instinct, inst some instinct inside makes me stop, makes stops me from moving, as if doing so would stop me from being noticed. I don't even dare to take a breath. As my eyes start to, I start to water from the lack of oxygen. The figure in the mirror seems to start wavering as well. Crap, 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 crap. I can't take it anymore. As I've been over to take a wheezing breath, the figure ducks down as well. Huh? Is that... my reflection? Scanning my surroundings, I quickly jump to the light switch and flicker on as fast as possible. The fluorescent lights over overhead flicker to life, confirming my suspicions. I glare at my reflection, and then snort. I was scared of my own reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky that no one else was here to see that. 
I slam a stall store shut on compulsion as a sign of bravado to myself, I guess. <laughs> Cringing at the shockingly loud echoes of the door reverberating around the bathroom, I can't help but remain quiet now. The frigid tap water of the sink reminds me of Yuri's icy hands during the game. I should probably hurry back. That was perhaps the most nerve-wracking trip to the bathroom I've ever taken. <laughs> I shake my head. Snap out of it, Zero. All these stories aren't real. Ghosts aren't real. It's awfully quiet inside the club room. I wonder what witchcraft the girls are up to now. Stepping into the classroom, a pang of fear and adrenaline shoots through my heart. At first glance, the girls seem to have disappeared. But I quickly realized that they haven't disappeared. They're all collapsed on the floor and desks. Oh, very convincing, guys. Yeah, I totally believe they're all actually dead. Very funny. A slight rustling gets my attention. Something in my peripheral vision moves and looks like on paper. Curious, I amble over. You should... Never... all oh, Have... Come... What? Why is the coin spelling this out? Wait, more importantly, how is the coin moving by itself? My mind flashes back to what Yuri said before I left. We hadn't properly finished the game. There was a certain procedure that I was supposed to follow. What happens if you don't do all that? Hold on, it's not like ghosts are real though. Right? You must be playing a prank on me right now. Right? I reach down to shake Monica's shoulders. She's lying prone on the floor and I can't help but feel a dread that her body will be cold. I start to reach down, I freeze. Are those... those footsteps outside? No one else is supposed to be in the school, right? In a panic state, I scan the bodies on the floor. All the girls are here, so... The footsteps grow louder and louder. They don't sound... normal. Almost like they're shuffling or dragging along. Is this real? Am I starting to hear things now? The blood rushing through my ears is drowning out the sound of the footsteps. Where are they now? I can't tell. Are they close by? Should I hide? How much time until they reach the club room? I can't tell. Crap, crap, crap. I throw myself to the floor, squeezing my eyes shut. The sound of my heart hammering in my, hammering in my chest is almost deafening. Over the drumming of my heart, I hear it. The footsteps stopping outside the club room. Please, 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 please don't open the door. As the door rattles open, there's an awful sinking, sinking silence. Until someone or something breathes. Some kind of raspy gurgling. Into low, deep vocalization. Something that sounds off. As if someone had warped the sound in a computer program. Something completely and utterly unnatural that raises the hair on the back of my neck. I feel absolutely paralyzed. My muscles are tensed. My jaw aching from my clenching and shut in nervousness. But if I relaxed. The adrenaline rushing through my body would immediately give me away with my trembling. As the sweat trickles down the side of my head, I hear it drawing near. Po -po. <laughs> a warm moistness settles on my neck, as if someone were breathing over me. I dare not even breathe. The idea of breathing in the fetid smell of its breath nearly triggers my gag reflex. Am I just imagining this? It can't be. Can I? I can't think of any way that this could all just be a simple prank. There's no way any of the girls could have ma manufactured this being that feels wrong to its very core. The temptation to satisfy my curiosity and look at whatever's hovering over me is almost overpowering. But an instinct deep within my demands that I keep my eyes shut. I can't help but feel a dread that something horrific will happen if I look up. All I can think to do is pray for this thing to go away. Please go away, please go away, please go away, please go away. Maybe this mantra can help me drown out the sheer fear that I'm feeling. While silently chanting my mantra over and over my head, I realize that this room has gone quiet. Suspiciously quiet. It's too soon to move, isn't it? I'll give it a few I'll give it five minutes until I peek out at the room. Seconds turn to years, turn to decades. I can't tell how much time has passed, even my panic state of mind, I'll trust myself to judge time. Well, it feels like an hour has passed, but it's probably more like a minute or two. Has it been five minutes? Should I open my eyes? Should I? Hold on. Shouldn't I be getting help for the others soon? But if something happens to me, then I can't get help for them anyway. What do I do? How much longer should I hold out for? I can't believe that this is actually happening. 
gone insane, haven't I? Do I dare to open my eyes? A stranger or something. Anything. No god. <laughs> but it's completely silent. Do I dare? Do I? Maybe I should. If only to end this torment. Screw it! I cautiously open my eyes the smallest bit, peeking out from behind a, a curtain of lashes. Nothing is there. Just an empty classroom. A wave of relief cascades through my body as I quietly as I dare, without the breath I've been holding in. I lay there for a bit, breathing heavily. Slowly, I get up and walk over to Monica and desperately shake her. In my hysterical state, I can't help but think that she's probably dead. Monica! Monica! Please wake up! In your face! Monica! My- my what?! <laughs> you should have seen your face! She sits up, emerald eyes tearing up for, tearing up for mirth. What? Did you think we were actually dead? Her laughter fills the room as the other girls also sit up. I'm sorry for scaring you twice in one night, Zero. But as you said, it is Halloween. This... this whole thing, it was just a prank? The board, the footsteps, the... Of course! Yuri told me about Kokiri-san a week before Halloween, so I was able to rig the answers. It wasn't a ghost or anything like that, dummy. Sayori would have said that Kokiri sound was right no matter what answer Monica made it give. And the footsteps? There were some little speakers that hid inside the class in the classroom. Sayori had the idea to pre-record some of the footsteps and send them to me so we could make it sound like there was something coming. I sigh as all the tension leaves my body. Is there a rational explanation for all of this? These other girls laugh and can help but join in. Yeah, they got me fair and square. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll admit. Well played, you got me good. I feel like we didn't shake their bodies enough. Like, you could have slapped Sayori. She probably would have been like, What? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, now. <laughs> Why did we go to Monica, the one who would act the best? Well, go to Sayori. She would easily mess up. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, recall Natsuki cute. <laughs> you got me good. I'm curious, though. How'd you get another person to agree to this? Huh? What do you mean? Oh fuck, I knew it. <laughs> Come on, guys. The game's up. I know it was just a prank. No, seriously. What do you mean? Are you really gonna keep up with the joke? You know, the guy who came inside while I was on the floor? He was all gurgling and raspy and kept making these noises. Like he was saying, well, I'll sound dumb when I try to mimic him, but he was like, Poe. Um, Zero? What are you talking about? We didn't ask anyone else to help out. After all, we couldn't take the risk of having someone report that we trespassed. Indeed. Monica's rules are simply to rig the Kokiri-san ritual and use the speakers. Who are you talking about? As far as we're concerned, we're the only ones in the building. What? You guys are completely serious now? The girls all nod at me. The only, things I could, the only thing I did was deliberately moving the coin around while I was touching and rigging the speakers. Nothing else? That's right. Sorry. You swear they were telling the truth. I am! Sarah would never lie, the, the lie that to me. So that means... Wait, so you guys didn't hear it? Now exchange looks a bewilderment. Am I actually losing my mind? <laughs> like Yuri said, I'm pretty sure it's just us in the building. You're honestly telling me you didn't hear anything. The girls share a look of alarm. Zero, relax! There was nothing there! It's okay. <laughs> yeah, even if there was some spooky ghost, I would have kicked its butt. The tinge of humor, along with Sarah's reassurance, helps me calm down a little. Not exactly Vince, but if the others didn't see or hear anything, and they were in the same room, then I must have just imagined it. Right? Oh, right? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> it's still a mystery. <laughs> okay, everyone. It's getting late. Let's clean up and call it a night. It's still a mystery. I used to think that I'd grown out of Halloween. But today we realized anyone can enjoy it. Horror can be fun. Only when it isn't too scary, though. You okay? Huh? Yeah, I'm good. I was just thinking about the Ouija board. Th that thing really got to you, huh? I was a little scared, too. Even though I knew Monica was behind it all. Anyway, I'll see you in school tomorrow. Good night! See ya, Sayori. As I turn to walk home, I can't help but laugh. Yeah, those girls got me good. Never saw that coming. The bit where the coin was moving by itself was really good, too. Wait. I can only say that she rigged the actual ritual. Not that she moved the coin around afterwards. 
Not to mention, there's no way she could have moved him when she was on the floor. The coin. The entity. So does that mean... I take it back. I hate Halloween. <laughs> 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 That's funny. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Zero! Thanks for playing our Halloween teaser! We really hope you enjoyed it. This is just a little flavor of what's to come for Blue Skies. Unfortunately, we can't give you a release date for the Volaris or anything like that. Indeed, there's still a lot of work to be done. We had a peek at what our writers had in store for us, though. Yeah, you guys are in for a real treat. It's gonna be awesome. Without giving too much away, these definitely aren't the only new sprites we're going to be getting. Ooh, okay. I mean, if right. there aren't, then I'm, I'm, I'm excited, because these sprites are really well made. <laughs> mm -hmm. New clothes? Of course! You can't expect us to wear the same stuff all, all around, all, all year round, can you? How intriguing. Halloween isn't the only festivity we'll be exploring either! Jeez, so why does this mod scope anyway? There must be a lot of people working on this. Well, speaking of which, these conveniently placed credits sh should shed some insight. Oh, pfft. Man, what good <laughs> credits. <laughs> Sir Swampert, me. <laughs> me. <laughs> Time to go come gang all jerseys. Okay. Alright, yeah, okay, this is all the people. Kokiri san? <laughs> oh. Oh, Kokiri san CG. Music. Poetry. And finally, for coding. Well, it's been a long day. We'll see you in the next teaser, Blue Skies releases. See ya! Until next time. Peace. What the? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sands for Smash! <laughs> Confirmed! Oh my god. Well. Oh my god. Hey, you feeling spooked, Monica? <laughs> <laughs> Were you spooked? I liked how they did it, though. I liked that the ending, like, they didn't put, like, a jump scare at the end or something to make it, like, but what if the monster was. Oh! I, was, like, I like that they I didn't was scared, reveal it. Like, Hmm? Almost the whole, almost the whole time, almost of the whole time, I was scared of that happening. <laughs> it was gonna jump scare you. Yeah. I'll be honest, I was kind of like preparing myself. <laughs> 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 but I like how it ended with like without the MC giving, knowing like full answers. So he's just like, you know what? He's like, you know what? I changed my mind. I hate Halloween. <laughs> 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 he's like, screw this, and he just like walks home. Like that's very like TV show Halloween special ending. <laughs> But this was cute. I like this. Blue Skies, I, I think when Blue Skies yeah. comes out, it has very, is a high potential. There's a lot of potential here. This could very well be the best mod for DDLC if, when it comes out. Yeah. Because, like, the writing, they know how to write. And from the demo that I played, they, it was, it was, the demo was pretty good, too. I think mm -hmm. it can be, it can probably, because, I mean, I'm assuming Blue Skies is trying to be, like, normal visual novel. It's trying to turn DDLC into a normal dating sim. So... It's basically, it's competition will be the other dating sims, like Normal VN, Purist Mod, other shit, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is cool. But anyway, that is the end of this, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. This is a very long episode, because I did not think this teaser was going to uh, be yeah, this long. I was, just, I was just about to say, like, this was really long. <laughs> I thought this was going to be like... Because this is a teaser, so it was like 30 minutes. This shit was an hour. Like, this was very, very well done. Like It was props. like two hours. Yeah, it was, it was actually really long. Fuck. Let me know. I've been recording for an hour. Really? I thought it was like an hour and 30 minutes at least. It almost, it's almost been an hour and 30 minutes, but this video is not going to be an hour and 30 minutes. I mean, we haven't even been recording. We've been recording for an hour and 28 minutes. <laughs> oh... Yeah, it hasn't been two hours. It was an hour. So, like, the entire thing is an hour. And even then, I think if you... If, if we didn't make comments and shit, it might have been, like, shorter. Maybe, like, an hour. Or, like, 40 minutes. I don't know. But anyway, that is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. The video for tomorrow should be the final part of Super Mario 64. That should be the next video that gets uploaded. And then, yeah... I guess, yeah, that'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to play this, the link will be in the description. If you want to play it for yourself, again, 
I don't know why you would. I mean, they know it's like, why would you want to play it? There's no choices, but you know, who knows? I mean, maybe someone wants to play this mod for themselves. Maybe, maybe you didn't watch the video, and maybe you just went to the video <laughs> in the beginning. You Granted, how are you even hearing this? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I put the description. Look, I'm putting the links in the description anyway. All right, this doesn't stop. <laughs> Skip to the end of the video because they were like. Let's see his ending thoughts, and then... <laughs> well, maybe they doubt... <laughs> I, I wonder what Zero's ending thoughts were. Hmm. Specifically the ending. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Zero. Peace.